And then I had my, I had like an Excel, an Excel spreadsheet full of notes and I'd have different tabs for each module. And it, it, it got out of hand. It, it got gigantic to the point where that was not helpful to me in my final review. But I found that note taking during the lecture helped me stay on track and helped me stay focused because without note taking, I'll just be, I'll just be listening to it. Cause like I said, they, the lectures get, they get dense. They get very, very dense and they, Especially once the examples start coming in, it's 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 hard to follow at, at, at some points. At least I personally, I, I I definitely found that's kind of that. I really didn't take much flashcards, and then my notes were my notes were just to stay focused, and that that was kind of that. Welcome to episode 96 of the CPA Exam Experience podcast from Superfast CPA. I'm Nate, and in today's interview, you're going to hear me talk with Mike. So I recorded this interview with Mike close to two years ago at this point, and I'm not really sure why we never published it. There was We did a few of these interviews in different batches, and I switched the interview software we were using. I switched from Zoom, and somehow it kind of fell through the cracks, and then just this week, Mike emailed me and was referring one of his coworkers. So Mike is now all done with the CPA. But this was our original interview from, I think, a year and a half or two years ago. So Mike is the author of the famous email, at least to me. This is probably my favorite customer email of all times. Uh, he sent an email, and here I'll just read it. This is from... So April, 2020. So yes, it was two years ago. So Mike's email says, I'm not sure whom I'm speaking to, but I hope this gets to the proper marketing team, content team. I use this program with Becker and Crushed Far. I'm at a big four accounting firm. Many of my peers failed on their first attempt, but I passed. The only differentiation was I had your audio guides and study guide. I believe in this product for far and feel like more people should try it out. Now should be the time that you should run targeted ads for people studying for the CPA. Many individuals are losing motivation due to tests being postponed. So he's referencing the uh, the COVID year, 2020, and a lot of testing centers obviously shut down for several months. He says, you can run an ad campaign on Instagram and Facebook and stress how easy it is to supplement studying and how bite-sized the lectures are. This is the perfect time for people to pick up the audio lectures, follow them in the written guide, and then make flashcards. Thank you for your amazing product. I will be purchasing for Reg when I can afford it. So if you've been on our email list for a while, you know that I, I use his email in our email campaigns over and over. I just found that really amusing because I appreciate the, se the sentiment of what Mike's trying to say. Just being very complimentary saying, you know, you should really tell more people about this because this, your product really works. <laughs> and so obviously I believe that, but I just thought it was funny that he was telling us that, you know, you should really tell more people about this. So obviously I agree with Mike, the ideas or how to implement the strategies. It just makes sense. If you have mobile study tools. You can be taking advantage of all these little five to 10 minute gaps all throughout your day. And you will hear Mike describe in this interview how that was kind of the key difference maker for him in addition to his main study sessions with Becker. So before we get into the interview, I just want to mention two things. First, our free study training webinars. As you'll hear, that's what Mike started with. Essentially, everyone you've heard on these interviews, that's the first thing that they started with was super fast CPA because in those training webinars, we walk you through the big picture ideas and strategies behind our study approach, how to use your review course much more efficiently than the normal way of studying. And uh, you will just have several big light bulb moments or aha moments as you watch one of these free training webinars. So you can sign up for one of those. The link will be down in the description of this episode or on our homepage at superfastcpa.com. The second thing is our free podcast giveaway. So each month we give away three pairs of Powerbeat Pro headphones, kind of just on the idea of using our audio notes as much as possible. Whenever you're doing other things like washing dishes, preparing meals, whenever you're in your car, walking your dog, 
you can be racking up study time and exposure time, and this stuff just sinks deeper and deeper into your brain by listening to the audios over and over and over. So that's the idea behind giving away my favorite headphones each month. So the link to sign up for that giveaway is superfastcpa.com slash enter. Or again, that link will be down in the description of this episode. So with that being said, let's get into the interview with Mike. I began my study process probably in about uh, maybe it was October or so. Um, I, I was given Becker by my accounting firm. I, uh, I was going through that and then I needed a little something extra. So I, of course, through that, uh, that YouTube ad I saw, I went, I went to the, uh, I guess it was the super fast CPA, like live lecture demo. Yeah. And, uh, right that I was thinking about, I was like, you know what, like this, this would be nice as a little like supplement. Cause, uh, the audio files, audio files seemed pretty light. I was like, this, this might be what I like need as the, the extra push. Um, so once I actually uh, gained access, I was uh, kind of navigated th- through the app, and I realized I could download the audio fi- the audio files, which was that was that was perfect. Mm-hmm. So I ended up downloading all of them, and then uh, on my drives to and from school, I'd be listening to to uh, each audio file. Uh, I tried to pair them with what module and and chapter I was in with uh, the Decker program, so it was kind of like reinforcing what I was uh, already listening to. Mm-hmm. But uh, I found that the audio, the audio files were very light and they were easy to follow uh, as opposed to a Becker lecture during a 30 minute drive would be kind of very dense and I would kind of mm-hmm. need the textbook. I mean, at least me personally, I would need the textbook to be following that as opposed to the, uh, the audio files from the Superfast CPA app. Nice. Yeah, no, that is the point that um, because that's exactly kind of what I experienced. I bought audio notes when I was studying and they were like the full everything. So first of all, even over like the course of a few weeks, it would have been hard to get through them even once. Mm-hmm. And yeah, while driving, if you're getting the full strength thing, it's just, it, it's, it's, it's just it's like a, a lecture. It just starts, yeah. you're not even hearing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. It, it's definitely a lot. I would, uh, I was, I guess I found a little bit of success in, um, kind of just squeezing in those audio lectures wherever I, wherever I could. I mean, as, as ridiculous as it sounds, I would listen to them. Uh, I was driving to and from college. If I was, um, if I was early for class, I would skim through the, uh, the actual audio notes that were on the app. I realized like the written. Yes. The written one, the written one. So I could actually like read what I just heard and kind of like highlight if anything stood out for I needed to make a flashcard for something, for something that I needed to know. Um, also I would listen to them in the gym too. It sounds ridiculous, but like my, all my free time was <laughs> just kind of like, how can I interject these and make this work? Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's exactly what I found, uh, again, was just, just studying with my review course once each day. I was just felt like I wasn't really learning stuff or just forgetting what I studied even that morning or right. And, right. and even those audio notes that I did have, I mean, I was using them. They weren't ideal. I didn't really like how long they were, but constantly throughout the day, instead of looking at ESPN at lunch on my phone, (laughs) I would do questions or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Instead of listening to just music or the radio, listening to audios and that just kind of like bridged the gap. So one thing you said, I wanted to go back to, um, when you said you started with Becker, and you said you needed a little bit more. What was that? Was that just because you uh, were felt like overwhelmed with the Becker materials or? I mean, personally, I uh, Becker provides you with flashcards. You're, in my experience, I was given flashcards. I wasn't, I guess I, I, reading through flashcards, was, it, was, it was not for me. It was simply not for me. Um, <laughs> So I found that I needed like another way to review the material to make sure to, like I said, to reinforce it, to really have something to drive it home. And that, that this is what I found the, uh, the super fast CPA audio files did for me. I kind of bridged that gap of where I would be using flashcards and reviewing material and driving it home. Um, that's where these audio files came in. Okay. Yeah. And then what, so, so you started using our materials as soon as you started studying in general? Just about. Okay. Just, and now I'm going through audit. Um, 
only because like kind of audit is like kind of because I already took uh, an undergrad audit and an MBA audit. So it's, I really, it kind of comes natural to me. Plus I have work experience in it so far. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really, really barely going through any review course in general. I'm kind of just going through practice tests and mock exams and kind of going through that. But now it, it's a struggle to schedule a uh, test really. Right. To be honest with you. So now I'm kind of just in limbo now. So now I'm kind of thinking about starting reg and just kind of putting audit off hold and you're starting to learn new material. So I know reg is going to be an absolute beast. So, yeah. Are you done with, you're done with FAR? Is that what it is then? Correct. Yes. I, uh, I studied for FAR for about maybe three months in total. That includes final review and practice tests and, and all that stuff. Um, it was, it wasn't easy. <laughs> I would have to yeah. say it wasn't easy. It took, it took me, um, took quite a bit of commitment and, you know, willpower to delete Instagram, delete Snapchat, delete Twitter, uh, a lot of weekends, you know, missing, missing out on going out and, and, uh, friends, birthday parties and events and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, it, it pays off. Yeah. It def- definitely pays off. Yeah. And that's kind of just what it takes too. So what did a day of studying look like for you? Were you, were you working full time already when you started studying? I was not working full time. I was actually a full time student. Um, so my day would normally consist of probably waking about maybe eight or eight or nine. I would study for. I would do a Becker review. I would do a Becker module, and then I would be going to class on certain days. I'd be going to class and then listening to an audio, hopefully an audio file that matched up with that what I just learned or well, learned from Becker to kind of reinforce it. And then I'd do the same audio file from Superfast CPA driving home again from college. So at that point, I've already listened to that, to that file twice. Plus I had the initial first time I heard it in the morning. And then I would get home, do a little bit of multiple choice questions. And then I would do, if I, if I was up for it, do a second Becker, uh, Becker module. And then kind of do more multiple choice questions. And then the next day that was, that was kind of it. Next day I would restart the whole process, do homework at night or whenever I could really. And I prioritize studying to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, and then what were Saturday and Sunday like, like what were you aiming for uh, study wise on the weekend days? I would let myself go a little bit because you know, you need some kind of certain time to just relax and rest yeah. on and then, um, so on those days, I really wouldn't do new, new modules. I would go over multiple choice questions and then reinforce what I'm not, what I'm getting wrong, with, what's not sticking with the, uh, audio files. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then getting closer to, so, so I kind of tell people, it, well, you know this cause you had our videos, but, uh, I'm not a big fan of like the full two week final review because if if you're kind of building in re-review to your day, each day, you don't need to like relearn everything by the time you get close to the exam. What was your approach to uh, the final review or the few days before an exam? Or I guess you, have you only just taken FAR then? I've only, I've only just taken FAR, but I've been through the final, the final review process with audit you know, like probably by now about two times because my oh, test okay. was yeah. like, well, I had to change my exams five times. So I've been through the, been through the whole process for, uh, twice. So, so far, I find that the, uh, the Becker final review is very solid, at least for far, it was very solid. Um, and then like I had said previously already, like I would just run through multiple choice questions and practice tests and then whatever I, whatever wasn't translating from the final review to my performance in multiple choice or practice test, well, I would then supplement with the, um, the C, the super fast CPA audio files. Gotcha. I mean, that, that's what works for me. And that's, I mean, maybe I'm, I'm just, you know, a unique case, but I, I, I passed with, you know, flying colors and couldn't be happier. Nice. Yeah. And then, uh, people in your higher group or whatever it is people were taking them at the same time what what was kind of everyone's experience was it right around those same fail rates like half of you guys passed half of you guys um failed i uh yeah i had i had a handful of a handful of my peers um 
fail for the first time. I mean, it is an absolute beast of an exam. Yeah. yeah. Um, but to that note, I also, no one else really had the, the supplemental audio f uh, notes and files like I had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, it, the thing that does make sense is the more time you can just squeeze in each day, you know, the better you're going to do. And yeah, yeah. I, I honestly felt pretty ridiculous, you know, going to work out and listening to uh, you know, <laughs> That's brutal, man. <laughs> yeah, we're, that was the that was the one time when I would not, uh, I couldn't listen to a county like while I'm trying to work out at the gym. So yeah, I would listen to music then. So that's uh, yeah. That's I excellent. honestly, I had like I I made a made maybe like thirty minutes a day where I would just play video games, and no matter like how busy I was, I would make sure that like I sat down, played thirty minutes of video games, listen to music, then you know talk to friends. Then that was kind of my like daily social interaction that i could always rely on it's just kind of ridiculous no i mean i mean you you know you could call that a strategy in itself i, I think that is important yeah uh one other question i had was what was your system of taking notes or writing your own flashcards or did you do any of that how did you do that part um like i previously said i did struggle with reviewing flashcards so the very few flashcards I made, I knew that like I needed to review these. I am I know nothing about them. I can't remember them. I've gotten a multiple choice question uh, wrong multiple times, or maybe I got a sim wrong that uh, I completely bombed. And I was like, all right, this is this is something I need to you know really nail down. Um, so I what I, I had a small deck of flashcards, and whatever I did have, it was you know the essentials. Um, I felt like that really helped me out because I know a lot of people have, you know, 500 flashcards or, you know, they do the Becker flashcards, which is like what looks like another 500 plus their own yeah. flashcards. So to me, that was, that was just not the route that, that was going to uh, work for me. And then speaking to the note of note taking, uh, what I found worked for me was I would listen to the Becker lecture and just take, just, just take notes to kind of stay focused and stay on track. And then I had my, I had like an Excel, an Excel spreadsheet full of notes and I'd have different tabs for each module. And it, it, it got out of hand. It, it got gigantic to the point where that was not helpful, helpful to me in my final review. But I found that note taking during the lecture um, helped me stay on track and helped me stay focused because without note taking, I'll just be, I'll just be listening to it. Cause like I said, they, the lectures get, they get dense. They get very, very dense and they, Especially once the examples start coming in, it's 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 hard to follow at, at at some points. Well, both of those things are really good. The the flashcards, that's exactly what I tell people. It's like you don't want to rewrite the lecture in flashcard form and just make flashcards about every single thing. What you do want to do is the things that you struggle to remember for whatever reason and that you personally struggle to understand, those are what you make flashcards about. I mean, and that's exactly Absolutely. what you just said. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Um, it, <clears throat> and then almost the kind of doodling, very simple notes during a lecture. That's, that's a good idea. Uh, that's a really good strategy to Thank just, you. like you said, it kind of keeps your mind locked in on what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Well, that, uh, I believe, oh, last question is test day stuff. What did you, what were you trying to keep in mind? as you went into the exam, as far as just like test taking tips, you know, timelines or yeah. What, what were your ideas on that? Timeline wise, um, I had already ran through uh, practice, practice exams and mock exams so many times that I knew for a fact I can get through multiple choice in, you know, a reasonable amount, reasonable amount of time. And so I have plenty of time for the sim. So Honestly, I didn't focus any amount of any amount of thinking uh, towards you know timing. It was kind of if I was stuck on a multiple choice question, I would I would highlight it, go back to it uh, at the end, and if I needed to guess on it, I made made an educated guess, and that was kind of it. Because generally, I can kind of narrow down two of the answers and make an educated fifty fifty if I really needed to. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't need to do that too much on on the exam. Um, Test day, though, I actually had a little bit of an uh, almost disaster. Uh, I wrote down the wrong, I guess, like activation key because I had multiple activation keys on my um, NTS 
And I was so nervous the day oh. of the test. They give you a little post-it note and they say, right before you go in, put all your all your documents, all your your, your phone, everything into the locker and write down the activation key um, onto the post-it note. And then you can go into your exam, go through the process, the fingerprinting, the whole nine yards. Um, I wrote down the wrong activation key. I wrote down the activation key for audit, I believe. So I, I go through this like 10 minute, they checked me, patted down, they fingerprinted me, they the, do all this whole security process. Holy cow. And then they let me in, I run and I'm like, oh my God, I started the exam, the timer's going down, I, I, can't, I, I can't log in. I'm like, what do I do? So I, I sprinted back out and uh, I explained to the woman what happened and she you know, gave me an express lane checkout, <laughs> if you, you want to say ran to my locker, ran back in, typed in the activation code, and, and it worked. So I guess my nerves were at a 10 out of 10. And uh, as simply puts, the moral of that story is to take a deep breath, pay attention to what you're doing, and I guess definitely double check the activation key before you go in because it sounds yeah. ridiculous. But if that timer would have went out, I'm not too sure if I would have been able to access the uh, test. Probably not. I mean. Yeah, I, I would have been horrible. I would have been horrible. I'm surprised the lady, you know, kind of helped you out like that. They act like yeah. prison wardens in there. Like, it's kind of crazy. Oh, I, I, deal I, I, when you I don't know. I don't the most. The security is like 10 out of 10. You cannot met, met, miss around with that. Yeah. But um, I was literally like running from my locker back already, like already uh, opening up my pockets for her. And like, she's like, that make you stick out your pockets and all that stuff like that. So I'm trying to like <laughs> exercise the process as fast as possible. Too bit. funny. Too funny. That, that was cool. Funny. Old, Test day, test day story. Yeah. Well, and what you said before that, uh, I mean, again, that's, I'm always telling people, if you spend enough time through the study process, just working questions over mm -hmm. and over like you should, then the MCQs take care of themselves on test day. And right. that's like exactly what you said. So yeah, I think we, we went through everything I had. Um, any other just uh, over overall tips you'd have for someone that's in the study process uh maybe i mean it's it, everyone's kind of struggling scheduling exams right now uh i would say to just make a schedule and stick to it and just keep just just keep pushing because you know yeah. that one day and you know whether it's going to be next week or a month from now or even two months from now we, we you know we all will be sitting down for the uh, test and um better better be prepared than not right yeah. correct So that was the interview with Mike. I'm sure you found that very informative and helpful. He gave a lot of good strategies and tips and just insights he got as he went through the FAR study process. And like I mentioned in the beginning, he is now done with the CPA exams. So we will be having a follow-up interview with Mike now that he's all done with the CPA. He's been done for a while. And uh, after this original email, I don't think we sent emails back and forth, but apparently he just breeze through the other three and, and now he's done. So if you found this episode helpful, take a minute to send this to somebody you know who's also working on their CPA exams. You might not give them a lot of thought, but these interviews, if you listen to 10 to 20 of these interviews and we're approaching 100, we have a lot of these interviews. If you listen to 10 or 20 of these interviews, your study process will dramatically improve because you will be full of ideas of mistakes to avoid and the key study strategies that work that need to be part of your process. These interviews are extremely valuable for anyone trying to figure out their own study process. So don't dismiss them just because they are free. These are almost just as helpful as our pro course itself. So share this with someone you know who's also working on their exams. If you haven't yet, sign up for one of our free study training webinars. That is the first thing that you should do if you haven't yet. And then you might as well sign up for our free podcast giveaway as well. Both of those links will be down in the description. So thanks for listening or watching, and we'll see you on the next episode.